Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game Mr. Com video. We're going to be discussing NVIDIA's Pascal architecture yet again because there have been another slew of rumors which have popped up, which states that the next generation GPUs, at least some of the lower end parts, will be using GDDR5X. Now, the X is very important, it makes it rather faster and uh, considerably better than regular GDDR5. But we'll get into that in just a second. Now, as we already know, the higher end parts, for example, the GP100, which is the direct successor to the already released uh, Maxwell architecture, the, the high end cards of that, for example, the GTX 980 Ti, um, that will indeed be using HBM2. HBM2, as some of you are aware, will have a variety of different board configurations available. However, most are saying that the consumer level card is going to have up to 16 gigabytes of. Uh, HBM2 and that will be operating to provide a total bandwidth of around one terabyte per second which is well let's just be honest staggering to give you a point of reference of course a lot of cards now you know the eight gigabytes ish some GPUs have for example some of the Titans have gone up to 12 but the next generation GPUs it's all about bandwidth and performance so enter the mid-range of the next generation because it's going to be that really that sticky position where the pricing maybe isn't quite uh, competitive enough to squeeze to HBM2 and let's face it yes HBM2 definitely does have some advantages for example example lower power consumption and smaller board sizes which is obviously a really good thing particularly if you're going with a dual GPU for example you know the dual Fiji's that type of thing can be really handy to keep the PCB uh, in at least slightly wieldy you know to at least go into a reasonable size case but it does cost more um, money basically to manufacture that so with all of that said plus the fact that HBM2 is going to be I wouldn't say a completely rare commodity but it's going to be manufactured in smaller quantities GDDR5 being used in at least some of the lower end parts does make some sense particularly when one considers that the once again the mid-range of the next generation is probably going to be rather powerful who knows it may even at least if the rumors of the um, Pascal architecture are true, it could even be competing with the current high-end cards, for example, maybe the mid-range of the of the um, Pascals could be around the speed of the 980, who the hell knows. So, with all of that said, performance of memory is obviously really, really important. You can't have a fast GPU without providing data to the actual uh, GPU itself, right, the actual processor on the, on the graphics card. So enter Micron. Micron released uh, some news actually earlier this year that they have gone quite a long way to improving the current limitations of GDDR5 memory. Now some of this is rather technical, so for the sake of this video and brevity, I'm going to somewhat glaze over it. But if you want more information on it, you can go to Google and just type in Micron GDDR5, but I will cover it at least enough for you to understand the basic gist. So, currently, you have a certain level of density. So, Micron have recently released memory chips with eight, up to 8 gigabytes in density. I'm sorry, not gigabytes, gigabits, just to be clear. But, that's not the end of it. In 2016, Micron are asserting that they will formally announce the launch of a new graphics type of memory which will have data speed targeting 10 to 14 GBS. So in other words, twice the speed of the mainstream current GDDR5 that we're used to seeing. What does that mean? Well, quite simply speaking, if you have a bus width that's, let's say, 256, which is a rather, I would say, sedate, it's a rather standard bus width of today's graphics cards, you could quite easily hit 400 or 500 gigabytes per second depending on the clock speed and that's only on a 256 bit bus. Do note that some GPUs for example have a 384 bit bus in the case of the R9 390s you could have up to a 512 bit bus so yes it is still slower than what HBM2 is capable of but it is still higher theoretically than HBM1 Plus, 
it obviously depending on the bus width plus and the primary benefit is that you don't have the cost associated with HBM1 and you don't also have the memory limitations associated with HBM1 either. I personally would imagine that this would be very handy on cards that are equivalent of let's say the GTX 960 which when you start adding the VRMs and the other I guess you could say supporting material to um, add a wider bus width you start increasing the cost of the GPUs and if there's one I guess you could say complaint I had with the GTX 960 yes the Maxwell architecture supports better color compression than other technologies which does help alleviate that bandwidth uh, that bandwidth constraint of the fact that it only has a 128 bit bus but even in the review it was quite obvious that once you start started to crank up the clock speed of the memory the performance did start particularly on certain scenarios and certain game engines and certain anti-aliasing solutions that type of thing you could start seeing the frame rates climb almost in a linear fashion obviously in some games you do definitely get better performance by simply clock, uh, cranking up the clock speed but once again in many cases it was really the memory that was holding the gpu back so this is kind of good news now i would like to point out this has not been confirmed by nvidia um, as i said this is a report that was originally published by tweaktown but in my opinion is probably fairly accurate because using hbm2 through their entire lineup of graphics cards would be rather i wouldn't say I wouldn't say it would be unfeasible, but it would be rather ambitious, at least in my personal opinion. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.